Hey guys, it's Corne here. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about, you know, some builders having a bad pipeline. And, you know, whenever I talk to a brand new client that comes on board with us, one of the main reasons why they come on board with us is because they're not quite happy with their current pipeline. Now, you know, they might, some, some clients have come to us, they have a full pipeline, right? So they've got projects for the next year or even two, but they're not happy with the quality of those pipelines. And then we've got other um, builder clients that come to us and they just say, well, they've got an empty or like a, like an inconsistent pipeline. And that is a little bit scary because they don't know when the next job is coming. But if we have a look at why this happens, you know, a lot of builders, especially when you start out, you rely on referrals. And I even talk to some builders that have been in the game for like 20 years, you know, they say, no, the only thing that's ever worked for me is word of mouth. Right. And then you have a look at their pipeline and they're not happy. They're not 100 percent happy with their pipeline. And the one common thing that a lot of these builders they always tell me is that it always feels like they're chasing work. Right. They're chasing those projects and those ideal projects just don't come their way. They see other builders around town just getting what they want, but they just don't understand why they are not getting those type of projects. So that is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. And I mean, if we look at um, things from a first principle point of view, you have to understand that a bad pipeline is not a result of what you did last month. It's a, it is a result of what you've been doing the last few years. Okay. So, and the reason why I say that is because, um, you know, a builder's pipeline, uh, especially from a marketing and a sales point of view is very long. So that brings me to the next problem. This is how builders normally do um, their pipeline. And I've got a, I've got a little um, slide here. Hopefully you can see that. So on the left-hand side here, you've got marketing. Now, they do a little bit of marketing and then a whole lot of sales, right? It takes them ages to do the sale. And then they do the project. So that's like, this is almost like a Gantt chart, right? So that's a Gantt chart right there. So this is almost like a Gantt chart. So they do some marketing, then the sale, and then the project. The project finishes, then they go on, oh, I need a new project. So let's do a little bit of marketing, but then they go into the sales process again, and then the project. And this loop just keeps going. But the thing is that loop just doesn't get any better. It's a very inconsistent way of running a business, right? You have to always worry about uh, like, you know, you're starting a project and then halfway through or near the end, you're like, oh, wh where's the next project coming from? You know, it's no real fun way to run a business. Uh, and, and the reason why I say that is because, you know, that is what builders tell us, right? It's coming straight from them. They don't like it. So this is what we suggest um, our builder clients do, all right? This is still a Gantt chart, but instead is doing these three things at the same time. So you're doing your marketing and then or let's, let's say here, you're doing a project. While you're doing the project, you're already talking to people for the next project, okay? And while you're talking to people, like in that sales point of view, for that next project, you're marketing, right? So then the marketing feeds the sales, feeds the projects, and it's not a loop like it was back here. The loop is within each one, okay? So that is how we suggest our builder clients do it. So the solution to all of this is you need to manufacture predictability, all right? So that's the key word. You need to manufacture predictability. It's predictability is not going to come from referrals because you know every time you take on uh, or someone refers to you, you don't have any control except for that particular referral. It might not be the ideal project. It might not be the ideal client. Um, but then you just take it on anyway. And the reason why you might take it on is because you don't have any other projects happening or you might just feel bad to that person that have referred you. But if you have a look at this, like your business is your livelihood, you have to have a look at it from a point of view of as, you know, if I do take on this referral just because I'm trying to be nice means I can't spend time doing the marketing, the sales to get the ideal project that'll move my business forward. So you're going to have to take make that decision. So again, if we go back to the solution, you've got to manufacture predictability. So the way you do that is you need to get super clear on who your ideal client is. You need to get super clear on who that ideal project is for that ideal client. Okay. And I, this is funny. So a lot of builders that I talk to most say, we've got a little bit of an idea of what a perfect client looks like, 
but more so often than not, they, they know what the perfect, sorry, what a, um, um, a bad client should not look like or a good client not should, should not look like. Well, they shouldn't waste my time. They've got to be, you know, they've got to have a lot of money. So it's like all these, like, this is what they should not. So once you're clear on your ideal clients and your projects, then you need a message that emotionally connect with those particular people. Okay. The project is not a live person. You have to talk to the person that wants the project. And that is why it's super important to get clear on the message. And how do you get clear on that message? Well, you need to really know what their desires are, what their problems are, what their fears are, what their objections are. Um, really what makes them, you know, excited. And once you know that, once you know that desire, then you can craft your message to say, look, hey, I can help you with that desire. You shouldn't think in terms of I'm going to create a desire for that client. That is not what marketing is supposed to do. Your marketing is only supposed to reflect the perspective, the ideal client, their desire and say, hey, I can help you with this. And then what you need to do is once you're clear on that message, then you need to start planting seeds. So again, if you look, if you go back to this, um, this chart that I just showed you before here in marketing, you need to plant a lot of seeds and you need to plant these seeds all the time. Okay. It's not about. So a lot of builders, they'll plant a few little seeds here and then in sales, they'll water it and then it'll become a project. And then they've got to go back and go plant some more seeds. No, the builders that are doing this really well is they're planting seeds all the time. They're having a look at their land, right? And they're planting seeds here. And then the next day they plant seeds over there. And the next day they plant some seeds over there because they know in a year's time, or like I'm exaggerating, in, in a month's time, that the seeds they planted a month ago is going to, you know, they'll be able to harvest. And then the next day, they'll be able to harvest the seeds they planted a month ago. And that is what I mean by predi- um, manufacturing predictability. So you need to plant those seeds. And then the next thing is you need to nurture those seeds using emotional storytelling. So what does that look like, right? That That is, you know, a lot of client you know, case study stories. And what that does is it inspires people. So by nurturing that, you need a few different methods of um, getting those stories in front of them. So you have to be covered. You have to think about in terms of your Facebook and your Instagram marketing so that you keep showing up in front of those people that already know about you now. Again, the the planting the seeds is the, the people that don't know about you and then all of a sudden you plant that seed. And then the nurturing, the, like the watering and, and the keep making sure there's no weeds and all that kind of stuff is putting the, the right type of content in front of them that keeps um, showing them that you are the expert at you know, being able to help them with their desire. And the way, again, you do that is through other cases like client stories, through education and so on, and through different methods and channels where they are. And then the next thing you need is you need, you know, have all these marketing. So if I just go back to this one, you need all of those like planting seeds, nurturing seeds, right? To then flow into your sales. So that is what you need right there. And then what will happen then is, you know, over time, and sometimes it, you know, happens quite quickly, but over time, that pipeline is is going to get better and better and better because the seeds that you plant today, you'll be able to harvest that in a year's time by finishing those projects. And then when you finish those projects, you're able to then capture those projects on video and so on, and then use that to plant new seeds for the next year. So every time your pipeline is going to get better and better and better, your pipeline is actually going to create your marketing and your sales for you, instead of you having to initially create the marketing and the sales for your projects. And that is what's really going to help you and your building business to create and manufacture that predictability. So if you're a builder and you need help with your pipeline, this is exactly what we do. We've helped so many builders all over Australia and New Zealand do just this. And what I would suggest you do is, is go click on the link in the description 
where we've got a 20 minute video where you can learn all about this. It's a totally free video. Um, you can watch it and you. what we actually do is we cover four main problems and how to overcome those problems. And if you can overcome those problems, those roadblocks in your building business, it's going to look completely different. So what I want you to do right now is, is go click that link and watch that training video. I'll see you over there.